Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I am Jason Romano. My email address, jason at sportspectrum.com. Would love to hear from you. Any thoughts you have on today's show with Chris Ferguson from Liberty? Any ideas for guests on future shows or just want to say hello? Drop me a line, jason at sportspectrum.com. Dot com. And we are presented today by IJM, the International Justice Mission, helping to protect more than 150 million people from violence worldwide. Check them out at IJM.org slash TF to join the fight to end slavery and become a freedom partner today. We're also presented by Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world, and an opportunity for you to team up with professional athletes and Compassion for children in poverty. COVID-19 has left nearly 70,000 children without a sponsor. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more soon about how you can help join that fight with compassion and team up and fill the stadium, releasing children from poverty. The website, compassion.com slash team up, compassion.com slash team up. Pleased to welcome Chris Ferguson to Sports Spectrum today, Liberty University quarterback, and he just got to Liberty, actually. He's a grad transfer here in 2020 with Liberty, playing this season, hopefully playing. As I say, hopefully we don't know what college football looks like at this exact moment, but he's prepared to play quarterback this season under Hugh Freeze. Uh, In 2017 to 2019, he was a quarterback with the University of Maine. And he's a six foot three, 235 pound QB who won the starting job at Maine as a redshirt freshman and as a sophomore led Maine to a 10 and four record and a spot in the national semifinals. He suffered a season ending foot injury in the sixth game of last season, 2019, and actually unfortunately missed the game that he was supposed to play against his future team when Maine faced Liberty. But this conversation is more of a look at a guy who has trusted in God, who has put his faith in Jesus, who has had some ups and downs and what he's learned in those ups and downs, who's training right now within a pandemic to try and stay ready for the season, and is one of 11 children in the Ferguson family, nine sisters, one brother, and then Chris Ferguson, nine girls and two boys. We need to have a podcast with Chris Ferguson's mom and dad because... What a life that is, 11 kids. So Chris Ferguson joins us here to share a little bit about his journey of football and faith here on Sports Spectrum. Take a listen. Chris, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Hey, thank you, Jason. Um, It's great to be here. Um, You know, I get to see a lot of stuff on Twitter from you, and I get excited just listening to all the people that you know, come on and share their faith and uh, how it kind of intertwines with sports and uh, athletes. It's, uh, it's really cool. Well, nice. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm glad that you can come on here and share your story as well. Um, this 2020 year isn't exactly going like all of us thought, but for you, this was supposed to be a year and it continues to probably still be a year where you were grad transferring into Liberty and getting ready to play football under coach Hugh Freeze. Um, we'll go forward and currently where we are now and then we'll go backward. But yeah, it's just been like right now for you, COVID-19. I understand you're at your home in Pennsylvania and you're not even, you know, near campus right now because I think for the most part, everything is still shut down as we record this. So uh, tell yeah. us what this has been like for you, COVID-19. It's been interesting. Um, I was actually, so as soon as, um, you know, spring break started for us, we had about five practices in um, spring ball. And, you know, for me, uh, for my foot injury, I just had previously in October, I was coming off, you know, Liz Frank. So they kind of wanted to protect me a little bit, not put me in the mix too much as far as team periods and live action. Um, so I was kind of being held out of that. But, you know, I was able to kind of see the offense, how it worked, um, you know, those five practices before spring break. Um, so that was kind of a blessing before this all ended. Um, you know, I got to kind of see those five practices are really invaluable because you get to see, you know, kind of how everything works, how the offense runs, um, communication wise. Um, I'll tell you what, the speed of practices were way different than I was used to. So I kind of get to see that a little bit. Um, and then going into spring break, it was kind of all going down at that point. Um, I was actually going out, um, into California to train 
And, uh, you know, I called my dad up. I was like, you think this is the right move? Should I go out there? Should I come home? Um, I'm not sure. But I ended up going out. Everything was fine. But by Tuesday out there, everything kind of started, you know, businesses were doing takeout, things like that. Um, so, you know, after the week there, I went back to school. We were going to start volunteer workouts right away. Um, you know, everything was going to be fine. And then they probably just said, you know, nix that because it wasn't too smart of an idea. Um, and then I ended up coming home and, you know, I've been blessed with a place to work out here. Um, you know, some, one of my old coaches, you know, able to work out, have a gym, um, kind of used a bunch of different fields, you know, things that worked, um, tried to get in contact with my high school, different things like that, that, uh, you know, I was trying to use their fields, throw with guys that, um, you know, from high school, it's just great to reconnect with them because otherwise I'm really only home for about a week or two. Um, so it's kind of cool to be around, um, you know, the hometown and get to spend time with my parents and my family, get to go hang out, been hanging out in my sister's uh, back porches a lot, go to see the kids, can't really touch anybody quite yet, but, uh, you know, that's just been great. Um, and then I've been working out with um, one of my old buddies from high school. He's actually a center at Pittsburgh right now, Jimmy Morrissey, and then um, a tight end from Holy Cross, Derek Mountain, who just graduated. So we have a good group of guys that kind of were able to come together, um, you know, and kind of keep carry that team bond a little bit that you're not really getting right now working out with your guys at uh, school, but um, I'm ready to get back. I mean, I just saw the NCAA, you know, now that we're in May, they're breaking, you know, June 1st, maybe voluntary. Um, and then maybe a couple weeks later, we're going to start workouts up. So I should be going back this weekend, um, you know, end of May to go back to Lynchburg and Liberty and uh, hopefully get going. How's your injury? Yeah, it sounds like you're working out. So you're, you're pretty much healed, but that Liz Frank injury, I know that's not a fun one for a lot of people to go through. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a process. Um, you know, God's definitely shown me a lot, which has been really cool. Um, I've learned a lot of different things, you know, about myself, about football, things that I probably wouldn't have gotten unless it happened. So I just look at it as a blessing in that way. Um, you know, that's, it's hard to say that with an injury like that, but if you can really look at it that way and see the facts and see through kind of all the negative stuff, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of positive things come out of it. Um, and I, it's doing great. I had to get, my screws out four weeks ago, um, yesterday actually. So, um, four weeks post-op from that, which was another blessing that I was able to get into the hospital, get my screws out, which is only about a 30 minute surgery. Um, you know, it's really like a voluntary surgery. So it wasn't supposed to happen, you know, that quickly, but, um, somehow God worked it out that I was able to get that done. Um, and then, you know, on the road to, you know, being full health now. So foot's doing great. I'm very much, you're allowed to lift right away. Um, and then I'll get running next week. So, exciting stuff you said god's been showing you a lot with the injury we'll go to that in a little bit but what's he been showing you during this quarantine time just this quiet time this pausing time that we've all had even though you're still getting your workouts in this is not uh normal for any of us no matter what stage of life we're at so what's he been showing you right now i think the biggest thing is just there's always opportunity and you always have time um you know you you create your own time i think in that in that sense, it's like, you know, everybody has 24 hours in a day. Nobody has nobody has 26. Nobody has eight days a week. Everybody has the same amount of time. And with that time, you know, you get to choose your own destiny, really. You get to choose where you want to go. Um, you set your own goals. You decide each day when you wake up, you know, what do you want to do? You're going to get better today. You're going to get worse. Um, you know, how are you going to get better? You've got to write those things down. Um, those are the things I've trying to been focused on. And um, just looking at the opportunity I have right now to – spend time in my playbook to work out, to get my foot healthy, those things, get a lot of sleep, eat great. Um, you know, spend time with my parents, my mom, my dad, my family, um, things I really wouldn't get unless I was at home right now. Um, so those are the things that he's opened my eyes to. And, you know, I've had a good sense of that good sense of family, good sense of, um, really hard work over the years, but, you know, making that hard work more intentional. Um, and then, you know, with coming into the new school with Liberty, um, you know, reaching out to guys that, you know, developing relationships that I only got to develop a little bit this winter, um, you know, reaching out to them and making sure, hey, how you guys doing? Um, you know, how's workouts going? You staying, you staying motivated, you staying positive during this time. You know, what are you doing with your opportunity right now? And those are the kind of things that God's like, all right, you got to hit it on the nail. Let's go. Um, you know, no time to waste. You know, we're only three months out from the season right now, even though it looks looks glim and it looks you know there's not much going on right now you're at home you're not around your guys but you got to keep that perspective in mind uh i have to imagine that you've become uh an expert at zoom just like all of us or are you on like a lot of zoom calls with your coaches and certainly teammates and just kind of 
uh, maybe even some Bible studies or chaplains or anybody like that. What's that been like kind of staying connected uh, virtually, I guess, like we all are? Yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, I mean, I think with my age group and kind of my generation, we're used to FaceTime and we're used to, you know, Skype and different things like that. So, but I know for the older generations, it's really new. Honestly, I feel like, uh, you know, getting on these calls. But, um, you know, for our team, team-wise, we're having, you know, QB-specific meetings a lot um, every week. And then we're having, you know, we've had unit meetings. Um, and then most recently, you know, Coach Freeze will jump in on those and kind of give us an update of what's going on. Um, our chaplain will jump in and pray for us, which is really cool. Um, and then a lot of meetings with just your guys and then, you know, your coaches. And then – um, something I've been doing with my family that we actually started doing uh, probably like four years ago is we do uh, Bible study meetings, um, kind of like a Sunday church almost. So um, we'll do stints of it. We'll go on for a while and then we'll take kind of kind of take a break. But it's actually my brother-in-law, um, Ethan Olberding. He's actually a, a colonel in the majors or a colonel in the Rangers. So he's uh, he's up there, uh, but he's nice, strong faith. Um God fearing, unbelievable man. And he kind of takes our family and, uh, you know, takes us through a Sunday church. He has a lesson planned out. Um, you know, it's something that we can all get on. I have a big family, actually, have nine sisters and one brother, um, and a bunch of, uh, nephews and nieces. And some of them are getting older now. So we have a big group on there that, you know, we can come together and, you know, work through a lesson, um, read verses out loud, um, you know, and hear people's so many different perspectives just in this little bit of family, which is really cool. Um, so that's something we've been doing every Sunday. Um, and then, you know, we'll hop on Bible study during the week sometimes with them um, and just, you know, get after it. Honestly, just talk about it, um, hear what everybody has to say and, uh, you know, just grow our knowledge on the Lord and, uh, you know, allow our hearts to change a little bit through this time. Nine sisters and one brother. And uh, that's a lot. So yeah. <laughs> where do you fall in the pecking order of that family dynamic? Where are you in that, in that order? I'm number 10. So Number I have 10. A, okay. Yeah. My older brother's 11 years older than me. And then my younger sister's 20. So she's a sophomore at Liberty right now, actually. So playing lacrosse down there. all from the same parents and everything, right? That's it. So 11 kids in 11 years, basically 12 years. Does that sound right? One, yeah, my math so the oldest is the oldest girl is uh, 41, okay. I believe, or 40. And then the youngest is 20. So there's 20 year, 20 years of babies. <laughs> So we need to get your parents on because that's a podcast right there. Just learning about parenting 11 children. That's insane. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. I got to imagine for you though, if you're at the bottom of that pecking order as number 10, um, that you almost had like a second set or a third set or a fourth set of parents in a lot of ways. Not that they're your parents, your older sisters, but they're 15, 17, 20 years older, whatever it is, the math, there has to be a lot of wisdom in having sort of a second mom, even though she's your sister, to be able to kind of help you as you were growing up, right? So much. I mean, I will say my mom is an unbelievable woman. Uh, you know, I love her. To, I love her so much. And she has, she's, she built this house on a foundation of Jesus. And that's the biggest thing. I think she'll sell you that. If there's a the number one thing that she could do is that, you know, she could get her children to the Lord and that our hearts are for the Lord. And that's the number one thing for her. And she's done an unbelievable job. And yeah, you're right. Everybody has their own path. All my sisters and my brother have all had their own paths, um, you know, their own stories. And that way, you know, they do all have different wisdom, which is amazing. Honestly, they all have different experiences. Um, you know, and when I go hang out with them and now their husbands who are, you know, like brothers to me, I got another six or seven brothers just from them marrying off. And, uh, you know, I have amazing brother-in-laws or we have a brother-in-law club, they call it. So it's, you know, a bunch of guys pretty much, you know, from different, different uh, places in life and kind of come together and, uh, yeah. you know, make that family. But, you know, even then they all have different wisdom for me and um, different experiences that bring so much light to my life. Um, you know, especially, you know, that they're all followers of Jesus as well. That's the biggest thing. You know, they're all rooted in faith and then their kids are going to be rooted in faith. And then we're creating, you know, generations, you know, I've heard that in many songs, uh, yeah. you know, affecting generations. My mom just, you know, taking the, stand that she did with the Lord and, you know, committing her life to Christ when she was 20 or 21 has created this unbelievable family and just, you know, people that are, you know, for the Lord and, you know, for discipling and different things like that. Quick break from our conversation with Chris Ferguson to tell you about IJM, the International Justice Mission, 
We've said it before. We're going to continue to say it. The work that they do is so very important. They believe every person deserves to be safe and free from violence. We believe that as well. And they partner with local authorities rescuing victims of violence, bringing criminals to justice, restoring survivors, and strengthening justice systems, protecting more than 150 million people from violence across the world. But this is work that cannot be done without our help. The help of Freedom Partners, some of IJM's most loyal partners in the work of justice, and their support, your support, of $24 or more each month helps survivors of slavery and violence from the moment they're rescued until they are fully restored. If you want to join the fight to end slavery in our lifetime, visit IJM.org slash TF and become a Freedom Partner today. We're also presented by Compassion International, a hope more powerful than poverty. And COVID-19 has left nearly 70,000 children without a sponsor. That's the capacity of an NFL stadium, an average NFL stadium. And as the world is in the grips of COVID-19, it has led to more sickness, parents can't work, food is scarce. It's really not a good situation. And the Frontline Church with Compassion is partnering around the world, courageously delivering essential items to desperate churches and families, often door to door. So Compassion and some of our pro athlete friends have teamed up to respond to this challenge. With your help, we're hoping to fill the stadium with urgent support for a stadium's worth of children in crisis. You can team up with pro athletes and Compassion right now by going to the website compassion.com slash team up. Compassion.com slash team up and donate your donation, helping a child through the next critical next 12 months and filling a seat toward a year of needed funding. Again, compassion.com slash team up. Would love to have you become part of what they are doing. Now back to our conversation with Chris Ferguson from Liberty University, joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. So go back to December 19th, 2019. You announced that you're transferring to Liberty. Um, you came from the University of Maine where you played for a few seasons, and then that grad transfer opportunity comes for you, and you choose Liberty. So take us through that decision and kind of maybe where the Lord was showing you to go to Liberty uh, in the midst of an injury that you were still in, trying to recover from, as you mentioned earlier, with the Liz Frank injury. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, getting done, you know, I want to give, you know, everything I had to my guys at Maine first before anything had happened. So I tried to, you know, I was a captain up there this year and, you know, a quarterback that, you know, I saw me and a couple other guys were captains and leaders of that team. So I tried to, we, you know, we sell them through, um, you know, did everything I could to make sure we had the best season up there. And then, you know, once that ended, I went and talked to my head coach, who I have a great relationship with, Nick Charlton, um, you know, and let him know that I'm going to be moving on and then I'm going to be graduating in December. Um, you know, and he was, you know, he was supportive of me. Obviously, you know, it's tough to go um, and leave those guys up there. But I know, you know, they want the best for me, which is, you know, what I love. I love about those guys and, uh, you know, they're hardworking dudes up there. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing place to come from. I'll tell you that much. I learned a lot up there. Um, but then, you know, with that, with the process, I sent a lot of film out. Um, got some articles out kind of in the news um, to let people know that I was making the move. And, you know, Liberty, I think they were the, probably the first ones to call. Um, and I got to talk to um, Kyle DeArmond, who's the um, quality control and quarterback, uh, assistant quarterbacks, and then Ken Austin, who's the uh, quarterback's OC coach. Um, so he was able to – we had a great talk for about, you know, an hour, hour and a half and just got to talk about football, offense, um, you know, kind of what I did at Maine, what they're trying to do at Liberty. And, you know, that conversation alone was really important, I think. Um, and then by the time, you know, everything got done with, I really only had one visit to take. Um, you know, and I chose to go to Liberty to check it out. Um, we played there this past year, actually. It was a game after I got hurt. So I wasn't able to play. But the atmosphere, um, you know, when driving into the stadium, I had a real emotional feeling. And I thought it was kind of just – Maybe it was the first game I was hurt. I wasn't playing, um, you know, and that's kind of how I saw it as at the time. Um, you know, it was really tough for me. Uh, but then, you know, looking back on it, you know, I think God might have been showing me something that I didn't even know about yet. Uh, maybe that emotional was, you know, had that other piece tied into that. Hey, you're going to be here in a couple months, which is funny. You know, I didn't even think at that point, I didn't think I'd be transferring, didn't think I'd be leaving. Um, none of that. So it was kind of an amazing thing, um, kind of a God thing. And then. Um, you know, once I got there, 
you know, I felt really comfortable in the place. They had amazing facilities, um, things that were going to be able to get me back healthy really quick. Um, amazing support staff, you know, more strength coaches, which just at that level, it's natural. You're going to get more, you know, individual focus. Um, and then, you know, talking to Coach Freeze, it was cool hearing him speak and uh, him hearing him speak about the Lord in front of everybody and saying, you know, blessing our food and, um, you know, blessing the day and saying, you know, just putting putting the focus on Jesus was something, you know, I haven't really heard from a head coach before. Um, it was really cool. Um, it was something, you know, my head coach at Maine, I think always kind of, we always prayed before meals and we did things and I thought that was awesome. And I was like, you know, that's great that they're doing that. We're doing that. But to hear him, you know, get, get in front of parents and get in front of our team and, you know, say those kind of things, it was, it really sparked my interest and, you know, made me almost want to just, just play for him right there. Um, Cause I knew that's where the center, that's where the focus would be at the end of the day. Um, and then, you know, got to finish that visit, um, you know, and I knew right away, right there that I was probably going there. So, you know, I waited a couple of days, called them up and then, uh, you know, let them know that, you know, I'm going to be making the move there. So that was kind of how the process went. But I think to go with that, the faith aspect down there and being at a Christian school and being around guys that, you know, are for the Lord and that, you know, living their lives for Christ, it's something that's, it's invaluable. Like I said, it's not really something that's going to, you're going to get anywhere else. I don't think there might be few other schools out there that, you know, are like Liberty. Um, so I thought it was really unique in that aspect in a place that I was going to be able to grow spiritually. Um, you know, and Maine was the same way, but it was kind of, it's a little different. I think it was almost, it could be easier up there because you're not surrounded by a lot of people. So, you know, to work for your faith, you kind of need to fall back on that. But now at Liberty, it's almost, you know, a lot of people are like that. So how are you going to separate yourself? How are you going to, you know, not fall in the, midst of everybody being almost similar to you you know what i mean so it's an yeah. interesting kind of uh conception there it's a little bit of a family reunion for you right too coming down to liberty yes yeah so i have my little sister like i said playing lacrosse there and then my uh one of my older sisters danielle is the uh director of sports nutrition there so she runs all the teams um works closely to foot with football which you know is kind of i kept that out of the fact of making the decision to go there but you know it was obviously great great addition to have family down there and kind of be somewhere that's comfortable. So I thought that was really cool. So when we connected, it was through Twitter. Uh, you DM'd me, we talked a little bit and you said, I have a story. I want to tell it. And so tell you, you've shared a lot of your story, certainly growing up in a family yeah. of 11 kids, but there's a yeah, deeper yeah. story there. I think for you that you want to share, can you share that a little bit with us, especially regarding your testimony, uh, it's easy to say I grew up in a Christian home and that's kind of all I've ever known, but I always say most people have to find that faith on their own. They have to come to that faith as their own, not their parents' faith, not their sister's faith, not their family's faith, or even their friend's faith. It's their own faith, their own relationship with Christ. So tell us your story. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I think, you know, just having my background, I do it adds to my story greatly, but um, you know, as far as the testimony, try to keep it sweet, short and sweet, but yeah. you know, same thing grew up. Um, uh, my mom, you know, made a decision that, you know, all our kids were going to, you know, work for the Lord. And, um, you know, I always felt that, you know, going through high school, playing football, doing those things, you know, I always prayed before games. Um, you know, I read the Bible with my mom a little bit. We went to church, um, things like that. But, um, you know, when I got to college, um, I wouldn't say I'd I fell off the rails at all. I just think, you know, some of the decisions I was making, you know, weren't right. And I knew it inside. I knew it in my heart. Um, I heard the, I heard the Lord calling out to me, really. I heard him calling out to me and I knew, you know, it was time to make a change. It was time to commit. It was time to commit, really. That's the difference, you know, making a commitment and kind of just having it there is different. So going into my redshirt freshman year, I was competing. I was already, you know, I was third on the packing order to get the starting job. Um, you know, they had me kind of counted out a little bit uh, after spring ball. So that summer, um, you know, going into camp, I made a commitment. I made a commitment to the Lord that I was going to follow him, um, that I was going to put him first, that I was going to work for him, that my good works were for him. Um, and that, you know, let him use me how he wants pretty much. And I think that's the biggest thing when you give your life to the Lord, when you say, Hey, you know, come in my heart, change me. Um, you know, whatever you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I'm going to that camp, you know, I woke up every morning. I read my I read my Bible. I prayed. Um, things like that. When you put the work in there, what goes in will come out pretty much. So when you're reading, you're praying. Those that that grace, that love, um, that peace will come out of you. 
um, you know, in all sorts, in all aspects of life. And I think that's the biggest thing that I learned right there. Um, you know, and then a couple weeks into camp, um, you know, the next, I forget what day it was, but we were going into the day that, you know, they had announced a starting job that we were going to have, you know, conversations with coach. And that night I woke up at 3 a.m. Uh, out of the blue, wide awake. And I think it was kind of God calling out to me, like, you know, I want a moment with you almost. Um, mm-hmm. So I put my headphones in. I started listening to some music. Um, I think it was our God. I forget uh, who would buy, but I remember just the beat. Every time the beat plays, it just that same exact day, that same moment beat, uh, rings in my head. And I ended up walking out of the dorm to the stadium. And I remember just dropping to my knees and just crying and calling out and just thanking the Lord. Cause I knew, I knew I got the job already just from the way I played and um, you know, the, the things I was doing, the uh, you know, the steps I was taking. And I just, I just remember in that moment that, you know, I knew that that is why, that is why we live pretty much. We live for him. Um, you know, when you make that commitment, I'm not saying a beautiful thing's going to happen in a month. I'm not saying that, you know, it might take years for that thing to happen. It might take, you know, you might fail right after you commit your life to Christ, but I knew the difference in myself. I knew the difference in my heart and that kind of, that moment I will forever, I'll forever remember as like, you know, that camp going into that camp. And then that moment itself, I'll remember just being with the Lord, um, feeling his presence, um, which I have many times, but that time, you know, alone, I always remember just being on my knees and just thanking, thank God, crying, being emotional and, um, you know, he just called me out in the middle of the night to bring me out there by him and me. And that's it. Right at that stadium. Uh, and that's kind of where, you know, the story begins for me, really, you know, with me being born again. And I and I've been baptized when I was younger, um, different things like that. But that moment alone and that camp alone, were kind of, you know, the start of my testimony and the start of my life. It's a great story, Chris. Um Thinking about your career as a sophomore, you led Maine to a ten and four record. You were a spot had a spot in the national semifinals, so things are going really well from right. a playing perspective. Where identity can kind of creep up into a lot of us in terms of approval, in terms of accomplishment, in terms of success from the world. And then right. you mentioned this: you suffer the season-ending foot injury in the sixth game of the twenty nineteen season, and so you have a pretty high high, and then you have a low low. Where do you learn more about who you are as a follower of Christ? Is it in the moments where things are going great and you have really unbelievable success and the platform increases and opportunities come? Or is it in those valley moments when you're struggling and when you're suffering and you get this this season-ending foot injury and suddenly football is taken away from you? Where does right. the lessons come from more in the highs or the lows for you? Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, the easy answer is in the lows, right? I mean, when you're when you're so low and you're so down and, you know, you have no one to look to, you know, you're going to look to Christ. You're going to look to God, hopefully. You know, if you know him and you you know what he can do, um, I think that's – it's almost easier in a way to do that. But when you're – when you are at the highs and you're doing great, you know, what are you doing in that moment? Are you thanking the Lord? Are you praising him? Are you, are you doing the same things that got you there? And I think that's something that, you know, it's – it's hard because people lose their way in that kind of sense. Like you said, you know, you can kind of get lost in the, you know, in the worldly, the worldly values, the worldly views, um, the satisfaction from there. Um, you know, but when you keep putting your faith in Christ, keep putting your trust in him, you know, the outside stuff that's happening, it doesn't really, it doesn't really affect you as much because you know, who you are, you know, your identity is in Christ. You know, you're a follower of Jesus. You're not a, you're not a football player at the end of the day. You know what I mean? When you, when you die, people are going to remember you, uh, you for who you are, where your heart was, uh, what kind of man you were, you know, not necessarily how many touchdowns you threw in a certain game or, you know, how many wins did you have? So, um, but yeah, I think, you know, through the foot injury, um, you know, I don't think I lost my way at all during that time for going from season to season, but, um, you know, last season was tough. You know, we had some lows in the beginning of the year. Um, but I just, when I thought that game, it was against Richmond. I thought that game was kind of the turning point for us our team for me, the season, um, you know, in the first series, I hurt my foot and it's just like, you know, you're asking, you know, you're asking why, but I don't think I ever, weirdly enough, I don't think I ever questioned God as much. Um, you know, it was kind of just like, I was just like, all right, I don't know. This is like the most crazy injury I've ever seen in my life. Like a foot injury on a quarterback sneak, uh, like made no sense really. So I was just like, all right, I know some reason I just had peace that God was, God was working somehow. And I didn't know how, I didn't know why, um, but I didn't have to, you know, you just have to trust and you just have to believe that, you know, this is the right thing for me. You know, this is the right thing for my path. I could be, this story could, you know, 
move somebody else. This story could affect somebody else emotionally, you know, spiritually, uh, mentally, anything. So, you know, I kind of just believe that, you know, that was the way for me and, you know, to end up at Liberty right now and be in a place that's so Christ centered and a team that's Christ centered. I don't know, man, I really can't say what God has in store, but, um, you know, I know, I know I'm, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, you know, he's giving me that piece. So that's kind of an amazing thing, you know, through all the injuries and the highs and different things. Last couple of questions here, Chris, let's do a little rapid yeah. fire. Um, I all call right. it the, the rapid fire go-tos. So I'm going to ask you okay. a bunch of different things that are your go-tos in that genre. And you tell me what your answer is. So your go-to, okay. what's the meal you're going to when it's like, right, I got to have one meal. What are you doing? What are you having? I'm grilling. I'm grilling a New York strip myself. Uh, Yourself. Good. Good for hopefully you. Hopefully my mom, hopefully my mom's making me some mashed potatoes. <laughs> She'll <laughs> right. be inside. And then, uh, I do like, I like asparagus or broccoli. One of those, uh, pan fried up mm-hmm. olive oil, uh, a little garlic, you know, that's the, uh, that's the go-to meal right there. All right. I'm hungry now. And that's good. Uh, Chris, <laughs> your go-to book outside of the Bible. Uh, yeah, the easy answer is the Bible as a, as a Christian, yeah. but what's the book that has maybe impacted you the most or been something that you've been reading recently that's been a go-to? Yeah. So there's a book um, by Trevor Moad. Um, I'm sure you might've heard of him. Um, it's called Take What It Takes. So mm-hmm. he's somebody that, you know, I follow on Twitter. I read a lot about, I watch a lot of videos about, um, you know, it's kind of something I'm really interested in that mental side of the game. Um, you know, his idea is neutral thinking. So it's kind of like being where your feet are. Um, you know, what's important now, not really focusing on the future, not really focusing on the past, you know, being, you know, what are the facts? What are, what am I doing right now? You know, what do I got to accomplish? Um, you know, that kind of, that kind of thinking that book kind of highlights and it's, it's really amazing. It's, it's kind of, uh, it's a little different than the positive thinking and, uh, you know, those kind of, those kind of aspects. It's a different aspect on, uh, you know, life and sports. Nice. How about that go-to movie? And maybe it's quarantine go-to time. Movie. And yeah, a movie that you've been watching or have watched that's, that's uh, doesn't even have to be like this impactful, encouraging movie. It could just be yeah. two hours to escape. For being honest, ever since I was a kid, Invincible has been one that's fired me up always. Uh, yeah. You know, just being, I love the Eagles. Uh, growing up, going to the Eagles games, that's one that's always fired me up. And even when I watch it today, I get motivated for some reason and jacked up. So invincible it's a great movie how about music yeah. you mentioned you were, you were listening earlier to uh our god when you had that great moment um yeah. with the lord but what's a go-to music right now if you're putting on some, some tunes elevation is my go-to for sure um elevation is the go-to uh i've been listening to yours i think it is i think it's called by them it's a really good song uh you, know, you should check it out and then king of my heart i forget who sings it but i've been listening to that one as well there's a few artists that sing that. I know I like the yeah. version from Cutlass uh, that sings King of My Heart. Which okay. Is it might fan- be that. Fantastic That's song. Spotify. <laughs> exactly. All right. Last one. And you can't pick Sports Spectrum. If you want to, you can. But what's a, what's a go-to podcast for you that you like to listen to? Um, there's a dude called Ed Milet. He's, a, uh, he's like a sports psychologist, but he'll have some really good people on. I listen to the one with David Goggins. He's a little intense. Okay. Uh, He's a little, uh, he's a little crazy, but he kind of just, he tells a story, which is really amazing. And then kind of, you know, it's about, it's really about the mental side of life and just, you know, believing in yourself and knowing that, you know, if you commit to something fully, you're going to get it done. Um, you know, and he's kind of a little tense, maybe with the language too, but, uh, you should check him out. He's pretty, uh, he has a book out too. Um, you know, it's, he's really cool. I love it. Chris Ferguson, yeah, Liberty University quarterback. Let, man, listen, I have no idea what 2020's football season is going to look like, uh, and neither do you. We, know, we both know God's yeah. in control, but I'm going to wish That's you right. nothing but the best either way and hope for a great 2020 season. Uh, yeah. Either way, God's got gotcha, you, and uh, it's been great to kind of get to know you and have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I think I texted you last time and just said, you know, I can tell God really puts you, you know, where you're at for a reason and trying to spread this joy and love and um, these stories to other people, hopefully to motivate them to, uh, you know, bring them life and, you know, bring them to Jesus at the end of the day. Because I think when you connect sports and God, it's there's a lot of parallels and, you know, people can kind of maybe connect on a different level when it's this thing. So, you know, I thank you so much and, you know, I appreciate you having me. And many thanks to Chris Ferguson from Liberty University for joining us here today 
on sports spectrum. We wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully 2020, we get to see some college football and Chris has a, a good season with Liberty under coach Hugh Freeze. And thanks to Chris. Thanks to our sponsors as well. Compassion International. Check them out. Compassion.com slash team up. Compassion.com slash team up and join Compassion and pro athletes teaming up with them to help save potentially 70,000 children who might go without a sponsor in 2020. Compassion.com slash team up. Also, thanks to our sponsors, IJM, the International Justice Mission. The work that they're doing is so important, fighting against violence and oppression and ending slavery in our lifetime. Check them out at IJM.org slash TF to become a freedom partner today. Thank you again for checking out our show today. My name is Jason Romano. Again, my email address, jason at sportspectrum.com. I'd love to hear from you thoughts on today's show or any guest ideas you have jason at sportspectrum.com and then check out our website all of our content can be found over at sportspectrum.com thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time right here on the sports spectrum podcast i hope you all have a great rest of your day